and I can't believe how strong this win is. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Hello, friends. It's a busy day here at UW-Madison as far as broadcasting is concerned, and I wanted to do just that, take you inside the broadcast. First of all, today, we've got the Badgers men's basketball team playing on ESPN. They're being produced out of these trucks, the big boys, Game Creek Video, with not one, but two trucks. First of all, you've got the main production truck for Game Creek. That's this truck right here on the right, and then Game Creek has another sister truck called a B unit where extra equipment, engineering, and other spacing for people is. Let's take a look on the side of the trucks here. You've got the patch area where video connections come into the truck. Now, all these cables here run into the truck dock, which we'll take a look at later. The big thing for this broadcast that's of interest today is this broadcast is actually being produced out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's called a Remy. That's a remote feed for ESPN being produced, like I said, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Here's where the truck patches out all of its cameras and things of that nature. Audio connections, cameras. Uh, here are the power connections for the truck that you see here. Pretty massive stuff. Here's another view of that truck. See that right there? And then we'll take a look at the second truck. These Game Creek trucks always have names. This one is named Pride. The B unit here, which always follows this particular truck, is also named Pride B. The next thing we have here is a satellite truck. So the interesting fact of this game is that you notice the satellite is not up, but it's a pretty huge truck. These satellite trucks on Remy feeds actually have encoders in them and those encoders allow them to send the feeds back to Charlotte, North Carolina in this case. On a normal broadcast, you would expect the satellite to be up and them to be transmitting back to Bristol, Connecticut, where ESPN is based. Note that, as is normal, this satellite truck, even though it is not up, is facing to the south. Satellite trucks, or satellites in general, I should say, in the Northern Hemisphere always face to the south because the satellites are geosynchronous over the equator. Now here's the next thing that we've got of some interest, another truck. You may wonder why would there be another truck here? That's because the Badgers men's hockey team plays on Fox Sports Wisconsin later today. That's produced by a company called Rush Media. So you've got the Rush truck here and all of their equipment. Now something of note here that's of interest is because there are so many broadcasts going on, Rush has had to plug into a secondary patch panel. Here you just see a quick look inside the truck there. And then as I was saying, there's secondary patch locations and cables can run inside of the building that way. We actually have another secondary patch panel here. I'll explain what patch panels are in a moment. That would generally allow a satellite truck to connect there. This allows the cables to run directly into the arena where the Badgers are playing today. So here's a bigger look at the Rush Media truck for today. Now we'll go back inside and I'll show you the patch connections that are associated with today's broadcast. Because in these sorts of broadcasts, the broadcasters don't have to run cables to every camera location. They have patch panels that basically leverage in-house wiring and it allows them to just connect to those and then cables don't have to be run the whole way. So we'll walk back inside the arena. As I pointed out here, you can see all these cables that are running inside the arena. So now we're walking back inside the Cole Center at Arena Control. So we're inside here. And now, you can see all of the cables that I referenced running from outside of the venue all the way up and over. And here you have the audio patch panel. So this is how a television broadcast um, 
gets all of their feeds in and out of the arena. So you've got individual locations where audio cables can come from. Notice the color coding on these. All these sorts of snake cables, these are cables that involve uh, multiple sets of audio lines, they're color coded. And then lastly, we'll take a look at the video patch panel. Here are coax video connections here. In this case, these feeds come from the University of Wisconsin and then feeds are also sent there as well. You may notice a bunch of these yellow cables. Those are fiber optic lines. You can run fiber for miles and miles and fiber is really the backbone of how things work here. So you do see fiber connections here. This is for the hockey broadcast into Laban Arena. Those are fiber connections that run out to the truck because you can't run coax video lines over 300 feet, so you have to convert those into fiber. And then you see fiber for television here, ESPN for today's morning broadcast of men's basketball. Fiber lines right there. So really we'll show one look zooming all the way out. And then there's that. I also would like to quickly take you guys inside of our video control room for today's game. So you can just kind of get a peek at the action. Here's the secondary control room. I'll explain this control room in a moment, but first we'll go over to the video board control room where we'll be very quiet and I will explain afterwards what is going on in here. So there, you just got a look at what happens in our main video board control room. At the front of the room, you saw a director who was punching up cameras. You saw a producer who was sitting next to him who's overseeing the timing and elements of the show. And then you saw replay operators in the back of the room along with a video engineer. Now we're in our secondary control room. This is the control room that we generally use for streaming broadcasts, but this year we've been using them for our hockey broadcasts. This room was reconfigured earlier this season. Here, we'll take a look at what we have in here. We've got a scoreboard graphics machine. This allows us to output a Fox box on the air for our broadcasts. And then the next thing we've got is a replay machine. Now, there are some basketball feeds in this replay machine right now, but that'll be cleared out, of course, by the time that hockey happens. So here, we've got our replay machine. Obviously, we could start recording right there, and then we would be able to roll things back. So if I take control of this, I can start spinning things back and forth just like that by using this control surface right there. So very simple stuff, but that's how replay works. Here's a program feed. This is what we would be outputting to our video boards. And then the next thing we have is our video switcher. Now everything in this room is IP based. It runs on a video standard called NDI, whereas the other control room ran on baseband video, HDSDI. Um, these video sources in this room are all on the network. That can be both good and bad. Here's your video switcher user interface. Here is the multi-viewer for the video switcher. And then here's another NDI multi-viewer solution, and this is the monitor wall as a whole. Here we have the control surface for the switcher. A switcher always has some sort of a control surface, um, but in this case, this is the one that we've got here. You may have seen the person in the other room sitting in front of a bunch of colored buttons as well. These are the buttons that you use to punch up an individual source. So in this instance here, if I wanted to take camera two, I could preview it, and then it shows up in my preview right there. And then I could, of course, hit the button to actually just take that, which is here. And now it is taken. Um, so once again, I think this will conclude the tour today as a very brief tour. And I thank you for watching.